The timeless wisdom that Ayurveda provides continues to be incredibly helpful in our manic modern world. And so this video I've been, has been a long time coming and I wanted to share with you some really simple understandings from the Ayurvedic viewpoint to help you in your daily life. So the first one is that in Ayurveda, in contrast to our kind of modern Western world, in Ayurveda we believe that lunch should be the biggest meal of the day, not breakfast, as we are kind of conditioned to believe. Uh, so the middle of the day is when the sun is at its highest, at, at, at its peak. And this is also when our agni or our digestive fire is also at its strongest. And therefore our biggest meal of the day, our most nutrient dense meal of the day, our most filling meal of the day, not that we should ever be stuffed, uh, is, should be ideally lunch. Because when we're having our breakfast, we are breaking the fast and we don't want to shock our digestive system. And then in the evening, we don't want to have a big meal because we want to be able to digest our dinner really effectively uh, so that we go to sleep and we are resting and our digestive system has a chance to repair rather than be continually digesting food. I'm sure you've noticed that perhaps you've gone out, you've had a late night meal or a heavy meal and you just don't sleep as well. Maybe you tend to have more vivid and active dreams or you're more unsettled um, or you feel really sluggish upon wakening. Okay, so that would be the first one. Um, and, you know, and on that note, th there's this real kind of conditioning in our society where we think uh, at breakfast, we should eat typical breakfast foods. So cereals, pancakes, toast, uh, muesli, etc. And this is entirely not true. So a lot of the time I personally will have, you know, foods that I would normally have at lunch or dinner. I would love to have some dal for breakfast or some risotto for breakfast or whatever. So um, think outside of the box and get out of that deep conditioning that breakfast needs to, needs to contain breakfast foods. So this has really just come through marketing most likely. So other than that, we have the concept of the doshas, which you're probably familiar with, vata, pitta, and kapha. The word dosha is a Sanskrit word, which actually means uh, to spoil or um, to destroy. So when we're referring to vata, pitta, and kapha, if we want to be really technical here, we're actually referring to the qualities of prana, tejas, and ojas in an imbalanced state, where something is out of out of whack or in disharmony. So really we're looking to cultivate in our bodies and our minds, prana, tejas and ojas. Okay, and when these qualities are out of balance in excess or in depletion, we're really referring to them as vata, pitta and kapha. So I thought I would just mention that because it's a nice little clarification um, to appreciate really the difference between the two. So um, they're both related to the same five elements and essentially having the same activities in the body, but we're looking as to whether or not they're in a depleted state or in an excess state. So whenever the body is out of balance in any way, shape or form, any dis-ease, any disharmony, whatever dosha we need to look at uh, addressing or treating or pacifying, it's nice or helpful to understand that we must also uh, look to pacify the vata dosha because vata is about irregularity, movement, change, and instability and so when the body is out of balance it's just that it's unstable and it's not in a nice steady consistent regular state so no matter what you have going on in your body it's very likely or mind it's very likely that vata needs some tending to which is most mm, common because our life our world is incredibly Vata deranging, like insanely so, sadly. So the next thing is that we really need to understand that if you are eating an Ayurvedic diet or eating according to Ayurvedic dietary principles or understanding, this does not mean you have to be a vegetarian. This does not mean you have to be vegan. This does not mean you have to abide by any labels, but more about understanding the principles of the six tastes the temperature of food, so the virya, so whether or not it's heating or cooling on the tissues of the body, so not necessarily if it's hot or cold in temperature. The third thing is vipaka, so the post-digestive effect on the body, and then appropriate food combinations. 
So it's not so much about eating meat or not, eating dairy or not, eating gluten or not, um, but eating in season and according to our constitution, but according to our vikriti, so the dosha that's at uh, in the most dominant, inf dominant influence on us at any given time. Uh, and yeah, and then eating appropriately with respect to food combinations and whatnot so we can have a really strong digestive system. And that is obviously a big concern in today's day and age, our um, digestive capacity. You know, and, and aside from that, because a common misconception is that we have to be vegetarian to eat Ayurvedic food. So I've just cleared that up for you. But also a common misconception is that Ayurvedic food is Indian food, which is also incorrect. So just because you're eating Indian food definitely does not mean you're eating Ayurvedic food. In fact, it means that you are not. So Indian food can be made very much according to Ayurvedic principles and a lot of recipe and cookbooks out there are Indian style meals, which is awesome. Um, but you can apply the principles of Ayurveda to any, any kind of food and lifestyle choices. And then finally, I think this is all I was going to say, um, is that, oh, you know what, just gonna, I'm just going to backtrack for a moment. In Ayurveda, we do not believe in snacking, and that's a generalized statement. There may be instances where we do encourage it, but, you know, again, going back to conditioning, marketing, and the Western mindset is we say, eat lots of small meals throughout the day to boost your metabolism. And in fact, Ayurveda says to do the absolute opposite, because then we, we have three meals a day, no snacking. And this actually gives our body these little windows in between each meal to digest and to rest. And this is incredibly important, particularly because there are so many people with digestive complaints uh, out in the world today. So please, three meals a day and um, give your poor, pressured, overloaded, often burdened digestive system a little break. All right. And finally, finally, something that is incredibly powerful to know and to appreciate and to understand, so hopefully you've made it this far in the video, is that often when people have sinusitis or sinus congestion or any kind of mucus and, and whatnot, it's very easy to label this as being a dominance of kapha, which may well be correct depending on the individual and what they've been eating and doing. However, what I'm seeing in most people at the moment is that congestion in the body is the body's desperate attempt to overproduce, to moisturize, essentially, to lubricate, to hydrate. So it's very possible that you have a lot of mucus or congestion at any whatever given time now or whenever you do um, because your body is incredibly dry. And so you may need to actually oiliate, hydrate. So lots more liquids and oils and fats in your diet, um, oiliation on the body. Um, that's really important. So when it comes to Abhyanga and oil self-massage, you must have warmed your oil and use seasonal or constitutional appropriate oils on your body, carrier oils that is, um, and high quality carrier oils, but definitely always warm, warmed oil before you put it onto your skin. Um, and always on an empty stomach, so it's a little bit of a tangent there. But you know what I what I see happen is a lot of people will come to me and they'll be saying, "Look, I'm doing lots of neti. I'm doing these saline saline cleanses of my nose. I've got so much mucus. It kind of gives me some short term relief, but it's just not helping." And that's usually because you actually need more lubrication. Um, so nasya is our oil drops in the nose, warmed, always warm oil drops, which you can do with a medicated nasia oil or just a cold pressed black sesame oil. Um, and these are incredibly hydrating and nourishing and often a lot more helpful in many cases if you're producing a lot of mucus because you actually have a really, really dry internal state, um, which is often the case after we move from the season of autumn into winter. Autumn really dries us out and then we get to winter and we're overproducing mucus to compensate for our dryness. Um, and, you know, neti, so pouring salt water through, warmed salt water through the nose is a, a far more effective purely as a preventative. So it's not something you want to just turn to and start pumping through your body if you have a sinus issue or you've got the flu or a cold or a snotty nose or whatever, you want to be using neti as a regular proactive preventative healthcare 
application. And the same goes with Nasya as well. But please note if you are going to implement these two practices, Neti and Nasya, they both need to be warmed, not hot, and you don't want to do them together at the same time. So maybe Neti in the morning, Nasya in the evening, and again, make sure you're doing both practices on an empty stomach, whichever you choose to do. All right. I think that that was everything, but I hope this provides a lot of clarity. It's so simple and it makes so much sense. And yet often it's very overlooked or we have these tainted filters that are colored because of what we've been told for so many years. And um, time and time again, I am forever blown away by the innate wisdom of Ayurveda. So let me know if you've got any questions and as always, take care and enjoy your day.